<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hey, look, it's the local community college webpage. And they've got a course on WordPress. And hey, look, it's being taught by me, uh, Scott Huntley. So unlike most of the speakers here today, I don't actually make my living using WordPress. Um, Nick kind of talked about what instructional design is, and he kind of got it wrong. That's OK. Um, but uh, so I really only deal with WordPress these days uh, Four, four times a year where I teach this course at the local community college. And usually the people there are small business owners. They want to get their first web page up online, first website. Um, I used to teach WordPress as a TAFE teacher actually in the classroom. So every now and then I'll refer to that experience. So I'm also very used to seeing my students all with their eyes closed. So don't worry about that regardless of what Nick said. Uh, so, Whenever I'm teaching this course, I always get to day two, whatever that is, and I talk about plugins, and immediately people ask me, what's the plugins that I should install? So that's always the question. So that's what the basis of this talk is. It's your first 12 plugins that you have to install. Now that being said, for the record, uh, there are 56,000 plugins inside the WordPress.org repository. I don't possibly know the details of all of them, maybe only 63% of them. Uh, I don't know all the ins and outs of how every single plugin works. In addition, uh, I just want to make it clear that I have no affiliation with any of these plugins. I get no money, I get no kickbacks, um, I, and I even know that some of these people are here that I actually mentioned, so I, I hope you like what I have to say, or I don't care, you know. Um, that's the way it is. Uh, so yeah, it's um, also, if you install one of these and it breaks your site, not my fault, uh, lose my number, okay? Uh, <laughs> So the other thing we have to talk about is money. Um, during this course, I usually come across this question. We have to talk about how much does free actually cost? Because they come in thinking, oh, WordPress is free. Everything is free. Uh, it's not, right? So today, especially with the plugins, most of these plugins actually, they, you can have a, all the ones I'm talking about have a, um, What's that called, a premium model? So you can actually pay extra to get more features and stuff like this. I restricted myself to the free level. The reason why is because I'm cheap and I just deal with the free level. Um, eventually, I believe it's nice to pay people for their stuff, so eventually I'm gonna have to ethically start buying some of these plugins. <sighs> so let's get into it. My first plugin, no, it's not, because it's plugin zero, because it's probably already installed, is Akismet. So Akismet's a comment spam plugin. You all know about this one. What it does is it will actually um, block spam comments from your site. Now, I used to not like Akismet. I used to have another one instead of Akismet. I'm not going to mention it. The reason why is because one day a good friend of mine sent me an email, and I couldn't find the email for the presentation. It said, I tried to comment on your blog post, and I couldn't because I'm spam. And I went, oh. That's the reason I'm getting no spam, because I'm not getting any comments. So I went back to Akismet. Um, so, uh, and now I'm happy with it. I used to get a lot of spam, even it got through, and now, I don't know, they've done some improvements in that time period, and so I'm pretty happy with it. You do have to go and sign up for a WordPress.com account to actually get Akismet, um, but you should sign up for one of these anyway. There's a lot of value into that. Uh, Gravatar is a word I'll throw out there. Uh, so you sign up, and it's pretty easy to set up and everything like that. And these days, they even have this new section here on the privacy, um, which has got to do with GDPR, and we'll talk about that and its scary ramifications later on. Um, so it's a really good plugin. I highly recommend you turn that one on. Uh, the next plugin I'm going to talk about is Yoast, and you knew this was coming, right? This is number one in the featured or the popular plugins, right? So I really like Yoast. Uh, I used to hate it, uh, and and I don't, I can't really put my fingers on why. I think it's because of this cartoon thing. I didn't like the cartoony feel, um, but. I've since then come around on Yoast. I think it's a really good product. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up. I went to set it up again for this this talk to prepare, and it's real easy. You just run the wizard, and it does a lot of the work for you. But uh, you set up like things like how your template of how you want the, the post or your post to actually show up inside Google. So if we actually take a look at a post, this is a post I wrote a year ago. This is something that's going to appear underneath the editor, and uh, it actually shows me that section there. That's all about what 
it's like a preview of what my results are gonna look like inside Google. So it's, it's a way that you can actually take a look at, at that. So it's all about search engine optimization, and in fact, I can actually edit that snippet, and it, you actually should. You should put in your own like, idea of what it should say. And in fact, this little box down here, um, as you type into it, it will go from red to green, and then back to red if you type too much, like I do. So you wanna stick in the green area, that's actually gonna give you the best sort of possible meta description for your post. And uh, you do all that, and, and you can actually see that they'll actually tell you the problems you have. Now, they actually have two sections, readability and uh, focus keyword. The readability section is all about writing better because that helps your, your post actually show up higher in the search engine optimization rankings, search engine rankings. Um, I have so much trouble writing this. And I'm, in fact, I looked at this and I had to double check. Only 3.8% of my sentences contain the passive voice. Usually all my sentences contain the passive voice. Uh, that is the hardest number for me to get down. Um, this is training me to become a better writer, and uh, yeah, that's, I like that just for that, even if it's not even helping my search engine results. But also, they have this section on the focus keyword. So this particular post was about the company I used to work for and how I was leaving them. And uh, you can actually see the problems areas are in red, the other areas are in orange, the, the warnings, and then the green. I had enough green results that this entire focus keyword was green. So pretty cool. If you actually pay for their paid version, you can actually put in multiple things to actually target. So you can actually see how you're targeting against multiple words. That might be worth me putting out a couple bucks. Oh, I was supposed to click that. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, the second plugin is WordFence. WordFence is a security plugin, very useful. And um, you install this one, and again, I was like trying to figure out, oh yeah, what did I do to set it up? And it pretty much sets it up itself. Uh, I really, they changed the UI, but I really like it because uh, it shows me who's attempted to log into my site. You can even see a couple people, oh shoot, I never thought about this, now you know my username. Um, I never use the username admin, so you can see I had a couple people try to use admin to actually get in there. I think it was me, I think I screwed up somehow. Um, uh, I've got a firewall summary showing me who's, how many attacks it's blocked, and even where the attacks are coming from. Not many attacks, but yeah. So it's actually showing me that information. Uh, you can actually pay for it and you get the, uh, you can get two-factor authentication, so you can actually do the thing where you have to put in the mobile phone code to actually get into your site. Um, but really, I should do this tab because this is what I like about WordFence the most, and it's totally not what the product's about. I like to go to this who, who is, no, the live traffic one. That's showing me actually who's visiting my website now. And I love this. I love to go and see who's actually visiting it. So we can actually, when I did this screenshot, we could see these are the people actually visiting it. Wasn't that exciting, they're all bots. Um, so this one came and they took a look at the RSS feed and it's from my old company. I think it's probably something I set up on the WordPress to check my site to do, so. I can't figure out why they'd use that. Um, but then this one here was, that's actually uh, Jetpack checking something that I'll talk about later. So you can actually see the bots actually visiting your site. Um, but you can also filter it for the humans. So this is somebody in Perth, so that's definitely somebody at my old company. And, but they only looked at the tag for WordCamp Brisbane, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, what I liked is this one here, this is from somebody in Footscray. Uh, I don't, anybody here from Footscray? There we go, we figured it out. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe that worked. Uh, there we go, so uh, you can actually see who's visiting. This one here too is really interesting. Somebody from Pakistan came to visit my site and they actually went and they looked at a whole lot of stuff and it seemed to be I IOT and education stuff, so I'm wondering who this person is. Um, anybody here from Pakistan? No, okay. So it's pretty cool. Uh, this page I like to look at all the time inside uh, WordFence. This is the 404s. I like to see why, uh, like who's not connecting to one of my actual pages. Some of it's pretty legit. So this one here, I changed the tag, I changed the slug, and I, I don't know, I'll have to look into that. It should have been a redirect or something. But I can make sense of what that happened. These ones are a little bit scarier. So they're looking for, is there a file in the plugins folder so they're looking for a specific file, and that particular person's looking for a lot. That's somebody looking for a security vulnerability. That makes me panic, and what I do is I hit that button that says block IP, and that actually blocks that person from visiting my site, because probably they're trying to do something that I don't like. So you can actually see the blocked IPs. So really useful, I really like WordFence. <sighs> when that happens to you a little bit, all in one day, 
all of a sudden you panic and you go, I'm gonna look for uh, something to protect myself even better. So I found this plugin. This is WPS Hide Login. Um, and you look at this, you start to read the description. Quoi de neuf, c'est français, je ne lis pas français. No, just scroll down. It's English. So, <laughs> no worries, okay? I actually were French into my presentation. Yeah. Um, so, what this actually does is it allows you to, you know how you usually log in by going to slash wp dash login? This actually, you can put in a code word. I'm smart enough to block out my code word. So, I do, I, when I go to log in, I actually type in a different address. So this kind of security is a bit like, yeah, you can change the login you are. This kind of security is a bit like, is, is a bit, is a, this kind of security is a bit like the club, uh, which is not really security. But basically the idea here is, there's my beautiful 97 Toyota Corolla, which is fantastic. It's parked in the parking lot. Some kids come along and they're like, if they were a real car thief, they can break into it regardless if I have the club or not. But if you're just looking to take a Toyota, I mean a Toyota Corolla from 20 years ago, they're, they're not selling it for parts. Uh, okay, so they're gonna drive around and then they're gonna light it on fire and everything like that. So it's gonna take them 30 seconds to break into this one or they could go to this one which doesn't have the club and they'll do the same thing, right? So. Uh, from an ethical point of view, I'm a little bit worried because it's like from humanity, oh, this is bad that people are out there doing stuff. From a practical, pragmatic point of view, better you than me. Um, <laughs> that's a beautiful car. Uh, now, if you own a 97 Toyota Corolla, you know you have to have a spare tire in the boot. The reason why is because you're gonna have flat tires. You probably also have to have oil, water, all kinds of stuff. So well, that way when you call the NRMA and they come up, what's the NRMA up here? Or, yes, when you call the RACQ to come out and help you, uh, they need, they're gonna need to have that sort of stuff and get you on the road quicker. I found out because I had two flat tires, my spare was flat. Um, so likewise, I'm drawing an analogy here, you need to have backups for when bad things happen to your site. So. There's a lot of good backup plugins. This particular one I use is BackWP Up. I really like this one. And uh, yeah, I can't remember what I did to set up. It was pretty easy to, to install. But what I like about it, it's, it's all based on jobs. So the idea is that I set up these jobs and these jo jobs run at a certain time. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay. <laughs> these jobs run at a certain time and they back up my site. Um, I can already see a problem with this, but that's okay. And I'm kind of lazy because I sh probably should have deleted the weekly backup because the midweekly backup does the same thing. But anyway, it, it shows you when it's next gonna run, when it last ran, check that every now and then. I logged into one time and I realized this backup hasn't run in weeks, what the hell happened? So definitely take a look to make sure your stuff is backing up. And uh, I do have a problem, they're all backing up to the same, same destination, I should probably change it to different destinations, because if I ever lose access to that S3 bucket, then, well. Anyway, to set up a new job, you go up to Add New, and uh, you, you just say, okay, where am I gonna back it up to? So this is probably what I'm gonna do as part of my homework. I'm gonna back it up to my Dropbox, maybe. Um, and you name the job, and then you say, what do you actually wanna back up? So you can choose, are you gonna back up all the files, just the database tables, uh, all that sort of stuff. And uh, then you can actually set up, you can even go through, granular detail, set up which database tables you're gonna back up, even which files you're gonna back up, and uh, yeah, or what are you gonna do? Are you gonna zip it, compress it somehow or not? And you can actually set it up so that you run on the cron, which is like basically a timer. I don't need have the time to get into, and I wouldn't be able to. Um, and uh, yeah, I always set it up so it's timed automatically to back up, and you can actually say, what the frequency is, and there's quite a number of options with that. So I really like this backup. I know that there's other backup plugins, but yeah. Um, this one, Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. Could you have a longer name? Uh, this, this one is a reporting one. I wanna see who's visiting my site, other than just go, going through WordFence. And uh, this brings up uh, Google Analytics into my site, so I can actually see who's visiting. Don't judge me on my stats, please. Don't judge me on my bounce rate, please. Um, I'm, I'm, it's just a hobby, leave me alone. Okay, so I can actually see who's visiting, uh, how many views I have, what countries they come from. This is blowing my mind. I looked at this as I was prepping this, I'm like, 
more people from Iraq, China, and the United Arab Emirates are coming rather than my family from Canada. What the hell, people? I can see where they're coming from, what sort of site. I really like this, but really, uh, this plugin that puts all of it in my dashboard, actually, what I really like about it is it actually attaches you to Google Analytics, and I usually go check out my stats on the actual Google Analytics. And if you haven't gone to Google Analytics, if you're a privacy-concerned person, you'll freak out, but if you're like, hey, I want to see the stats on who's visiting my site, you'll love it, because there's so many stats, and they display them so many ways. We could spend hours just talking about all the ways my website is not getting viewers. <laughs> uh, I realized a couple weeks ago I need to actually have a cache plugin. Um, I picked this one kind of at random, sort of. Not really at random, I'll tell you why, how later. But um, I used to have, a, I had a bad experience once with a cache and I swore off it for a long time. But I came back to it a couple weeks ago because I said I gotta do a cache in my plugin presentation. So I tried this one, this one works pretty good. Um, I haven't had many problems so I'm, I'm kind of happy. So I'm going to recommend you get a cache plugin. This one seems to be okay for me. Um, I was talking about it at the parties last night and so many people are like, that one sucks, go for this one. So, you know, tweet now why you think my cache plugin sucks and uh, share um, that information. This one, I don't think it's that bad. Anyway, uh, the idea behind a cache is it actually takes those those PHP files of your post and actually generates a static HTML file and that gets served out to your viewers and that speeds up your site a little bit. So it's a good idea to install a cache. And uh, this one's okay by me. Uh, this one, this plugin here, simple SSL. Uh, this will allow me to attach an SSL certificate to my site. Uh, again, this was one that I, when I was doing the slides, I was like, how did I set this up? And I can't even remember, and I couldn't even figure it out without clearing the SSL certificate and you know resetting it all. So I just went, um, if I don't remember having a drama with it, it was probably good. And in fact, I'm gonna tell you the reason why I know that this was really easy. Because, uh, wait, what is this slide? It doesn't matter. Um, I'll tell you why, because you're probably asking, what's SSL, some of you? And uh, you, that's beyond the scope of this presentation. But I was here in this very room, not this very room, that's a lie, uh, last year at this presentation. So go watch this presentation, uh, Warren Denley, all about SSL, why you need to get one. And during that presentation, I was this guy's job. I was the timekeeper. And uh, I, I was like, wow, I really need an SSL certificate. And I was able to set it up before the next presentation. That's why I know it was a good plugin because it was like no drama. I got it going in like minutes. So watch that presentation, get an SSL plugin. Uh, the other one, I went to a WordPress meetup in Sydney and Will Brown scared the bejesus out of me all about the GDPR because I didn't know anything about it and now I'm like paranoid that somebody in Belgium is going to sue me. Um, so definitely you need to get a plug-in to give you a cookie notice. Now I picked this one but um, the reality is pick any of the GDPR cookie plugins. So take a look at some of them. The reason why I picked this one is because it had uh, 800,000 installs, so I figured go with the herd, there's safety in the herd. Um, so that's the one that I picked. Probably somebody will tell me why it's terrible. Oh yeah, by the way, what's GDPR? Uh, beyond the scope of this, this presentation to tell you what GDPR is, but if you went to WordCamp Sydney a couple months ago, there was a presentation on it there, so go watch that, available now on WordPress TV. So um, this one I just installed, and it just adds this little cookie notice at the bottom of my page. Now somebody's gonna tell me it's probably not, that doesn't comply with GDPR, you're all wrong. It doesn't matter, I just, uh, yeah, I picked that language because it came out of the box, and I was just like, I can't figure out what to put in there that's better than that, so there you go. Um, so definitely put in a GDPR cookie notice. Uh, this one is a utility plugin. I found this one really useful from time to time. Duplicate post. What it does is it's going to make a copy of my post. So if I go to my posts, I find a post like this one, and it adds these two little things here, clone and new draft, and I spent way too long trying to figure out the difference between the two. I figured out sort of what it is. If you hit clone, it just makes a copy. If you hit new draft, it makes a copy and you go into it in the editor. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, but the idea behind it is that you actually can copy one of your posts. So it's pretty cool, pretty useful if you've got like a lot of posts that are, you're gonna keep doing another one that's just like a previous one, you just wanna copy it and there you go. Um, yeah, that, yeah, I should've hit. 
Oh, sorry. Duplicate post. Sorry. I forgot people might be taking notes. Uh, so anyway, uh, with this, this is really cool. You can actually set up what it's actually going to copy. So if it's just the, the title or if it's the content, I don't know why you'd copy just the title. But OK, you can actually pick what you're actually going to copy when you clone it. And you can even do who's going to clone it. So if you've got a, a WordPress site that's got multiple users and you decide certain levels of people shouldn't be able to clone posts, there you go. And in fact, you can even do this cool thing here where you can actually add prefixes and suffixes to the title and stuff like this. So you can really set that up and, and you know, kind of get like a sort of templating system going on. It's kind of a useful utility. Uh, this one, I really like this one. This is again another utility one. I forget who I got it from, but somebody was doing a presentation at a WordPress meetup and I saw this in their list of plugins and I was just curious and I looked at it and I was like, oh, I love this, this is cool. So what this does, it will actually add a calendar underneath my posts. And if I go click on that calendar link, it actually opens up this, that calendar link, it actually opens up this. This is a calendar of the month and it shows where my posts, when they actually happen in the month. So I can actually see when I've posted, get an idea of like on a monthly calendar and you can see that I need to post more often. But that's okay because I can actually take one of these unscheduled posts and I can even create a new sort of draft in here. It's not even a real draft, it's just like the title. And I can actually add that and I can drag that onto any of the pages. And I can drag stuff around and it gets posted on that day. So I can actually say, hey, oh, this is terrible. I need to post something on the 13th of October, which is past. Um, and, and I can actually do that sort of scheduling inside there. I think it's a brilliant plugin, really useful. Broken link checker, this is again another utility one, comes in really handy. So the idea behind this one is it's gonna actually check for some broken links on my site. So here I've got 644 different links to external sites on my, on my actual entire WordPress site. And I can actually go through and it runs automatically, it checks to see if those links are still active, they're still valid. So the first one here, um, that's actually linking to a YouTube video that I'm in. And at any time, the people who own that YouTube channel could take that, into that video. What am I gonna do with my blog posts after that happens? Uh, likewise with this one, this is actually a conference. I'm actually going to this one on Monday. This is EdTech Posium. They changed their name from Moodle Posium to EdTech Posium. And uh, in my old posts, I used to link it to the actual Moodle Posium, but they have actually redirected to EdTech Posium. There's a long battle there, don't worry about it. Um, and uh, so actually I can actually check to make sure that that's still working. I couldn't find any broken links on my site, which is good. Um, so this is a one that I'm gonna pretend is broken. So this is a post about the Pine 64. I can actually click on that post and from this menu, I can actually say, okay, edit the URL, point it to someplace else, uh, unlink it so it will just leave the, the words in there unlinked or recheck it, maybe it was just down on that particular moment when it went through and checked. Uh, the final plugin is, you knew this was coming, Jetpack. Uh, I, I'm sure some of you have heard of Jetpack. Jetpack, I used to have sort of a negative uh, opinion of it. I used to think of it, it's the kitchen sink and it's a big lot of bloat and everything like that. Now, as part of my community course, a lot of people kept asking about WordPress.com and eventually I added WordPress.com to the start of it. And the more I used WordPress.com, the more I stopped looking down my nose at it. And I started to say, you know, this is not a bad product. This is actually a really good product. And they actually add, the people at Automatic add a lot of um, really cool functionality into WordPress.com. Jetpack is a way to get that into your blog. So they do things like stats, and I love to have the stats to see how well my site is doing, not at all. But uh, they build that, the stats that you get at WordPress.com into your actual WordPress blog now. And you can see all kinds of stuff, slightly different uh, ways of displaying the same information as before. Uh, they also have this thing which will protect you against brute, for brute force attacks. I turn that on even though I already have that in WordFence. I probably could turn that off, but um, you can also do this one. This comes in handy all the time. No, not all the time, but every now and then I'll get an email saying my site is down. And that's because the Jetpack is actually monitoring my site. So remember WordFence, that bot that was checked, it actually checked to see if my site was up. So every now and then I'll get an email saying my site's down, I gotta reboot my uh, virtual server, and uh, yeah, usually that works. 
Um, there's some image stuff. Uh, so it will actually, a long story there, but it will actually put your images into a CDN if you turn that on. And that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I can talk about now. CDN is content delivery network. So it's gonna help speed up your delivery of images. Um, it even has this carousel thing, which I've never used. And I was kind of surprised when I did my screenshots. And I don't know why I included it. Um, <laughs> This comment thing, so we can actually do things like we can let people comment just using their, their various social media accounts. Um, and we can actually enable pop-up cards over Gravatars and so forth. Uh, this one I like, it actually allows people to subscribe, follow your blog inside the wordpress.com portal. So if you've never been in there, you can actually follow people's blogs and comment on, do this entire blogging world inside wordpress.com. So you can be part of that even though you're not in wordpress.com. Um, you can add these custom post types, which I think I included this because I just went to a portfolios conference and I want to play with ePortfolios a little bit more, so I could do that with WordPress. Uh, and uh, you can actually do this one. This one happens to me all the time. It's actually checking my spelling and my grammar. I don't know what it means by style, but probably it's going to tell me that I'm writing in the passive voice, which I already know about. Um, and you can even do stuff like, uh, what is this? Uh, post by email. Why would I put in that? Oh, no, I know why. Uh, infinite scroll. You can actually turn it on, put on infinite scroll. Uh, does anybody use infinite scroll? We have to banish that person from the room if they do. It's terrible. Infinite scroll, I hate. Um, it adds this as well, related Posts at the bottom of your posts, at the bottom of mine, I've got these related posts, and I didn't really have to do anything. It just does it automatically. It's magic. I love it. Um, this is what I love the most about uh, Jetpack. When I actually publish my posts, it will actually go out to my various social media. So I connected my social medias. So when I publish, it will actually go out to my Twitter, my LinkedIn, and I have no idea what will happen with my Google+, Plus, but nobody does. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you, you connect into the world of the WordPress.com. So I really like that particular plugin. So I've come around, and I now think of it as a Swiss Army knife as opposed to a kitchen sink, even though both those terms are the same thing. Um, so how do you find a good plugin to do X, Y, Z? For, so for instance, what if you need a good Google Map plugin? What do you do to actually find one? So this is what my strategy is. First, I go to the WordPress.com org site to the plugins, and I type in, in the search, and right there, and it comes up with 300 pages worth of Google Maps plugins. This is kind of like plugin speed dating. I'm trying to find the best plugin as quick as possible. So what's my strategy? I look at each candidate. So here's a candidate. What am I going to check? Number one, I'm going to read through that. I'm going to skim that, and I'm going to say, does that kind of sound like what I'm looking for? Number two, how many people are using it? Usually more people, better. Not always, but. Uh, number three, how many stars does it have? And also, how many people have ranked it? A five-star review with three people is meaningless, because it's probably mom, dad, and sister who rated it. Um, is it tested with my, my version of WordPress? And then I say, yeah, that's a pretty good candidate. Let's take a little bit further. So I actually click on it, and I start, start looking at this. I start saying, OK, uh, a little bit more details. When was it last updated? Now, this one, <laughs> really cool, 57 minutes ago. I bet they don't have that kind of frequency. That's more just I happen to catch it at a lucky time. But you want to check that it's been updated recently. Um, how many people, again, how many installs? Is it compatible with your WordPress version? I think I covered this. You can even find out if it's compatible with your PHP version, although probably most people don't know that. Um, and then you go take a look at the ratings. So, oh no, sorry. Uh, you go take a look at how many support tickets they've fixed. So this is not doing too bad. They've done 21 out of 30, no, 20 out of 31 in the last two months. Okay, so they're, 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 they've got a pass. And then you go take a look at the stars a little bit more. Uh, I always like to look at who gave it one star reviews, because I want to know why do people hate this plugin? Are these people crazy or are they have legitimate beefs? So I like to go through, just skim that. Is there any sort of how many people and how much do they hate it? Um, then I look at the screenshots. Is this a UI that sort of makes sense to me just looking at it? Is it intuitive? Because if it's not intuitive, I'm going to spend time, waste time looking at it, uh, trying to use it. And also, I take a look at what their documentation is just on the spot. So that way, I try to figure out how, many, how, how much help is there for me to actually figure out how to use this plugin. Uh, 
Again, I do all of this in like 30 seconds. So you got to be quick, right? Um, so then I say, okay, this is a candidate. Let's give it a go. Now, if you're a fool like me, you put it right into your site. If you're smart, you have another backup site, like a local copy, like another, and you install it there, give it a test there, because if it dies, then who cares? Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, don't do what I do. All right, so, uh, do we have time? Yes, I think we have time. We've entered the lightning round. So, how much time do I have? Wait, no, not yet. Um, the lightning round is as many plugins as I can do in the next little while. Definitely, if you're into e-commerce, go with WooCommerce because this is one of the best plugins. I really like it. I wish I had something to sell because every time I demo it to somebody, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, Duplicator, really cool. I used to use this with my students. They had to make WordPress sites. You can actually take a clone of that site, and then as a teacher, I would up, look at that clone. So it's actually like about copying your entire WordPress site. You could use this as a backup, but you actually have to physically go in and click a button that says make a package. How many people are actually doing that on a regular basis? You'll find out when your site breaks. But if you pay for it, you can actually get it to do that automatically. But I really love it. I wish I used it more. Uh, uh, Smush, this is an image compression plugin. Really cool if you want to actually uh, take your, your pictures and get them automatically squished. I usually use Photoshop for a lot of my images, so that does that automatically, but every now and then, you know, it's good to have this one going in there as well. Uh, easy footnotes. Uh, really obscure kind of use, but I really love this plugin. So when you're typing, if you want to have a footnote at the bottom of your page, you actually put in the short code note, and uh, you just type in your little footnote, close the short code, and you keep on typing. And you can just add as many footnotes as you want. Don't add a lot of footnotes, but you know you can add like three footnotes. You don't have to type in note one. Note, it does it all automatically. Really cool plugin if you use footnotes. Uh, feed WordPress. My presentation on Monday at uh, Ed Tech Posium is all about taking content from WordPress into Moodle and then back from Moodle back into WordPress using RSS feeds. And uh, I did that and I found this plugin. This is a RSS aggregator so you can actually take posts from one WordPress blog or really from any RSS source and feed it into your WordPress site. So when I was at working at the company I used to work, I, I blogged on their their site, on their site, so I, I blogged, but I would feed that back into my site using that, and uh, I actually even, you can add categories, you can add tags, it does that all automatically. There's a lot of RSS ones. This one I found bad UI, but really intuitive, so I really like this, this, uh, this plugin. So cool. Um, Pixabay, anybody know what Pixabay is? Have you heard Pixabay? Yeah, I use Pixabay all the time. This plugin will actually add a button inside there, so when you go to add an image, it will actually add one from the Pixabay. You can search from inside WordPress. If you don't know what Pixabay is, it's a collection of public domain images that you can use inside your site. You don't have to worry about Creative Commons. You don't have to worry about uh, any of that sort of stuff. Really useful. as. A content creator, it makes me sad that people are giving away their stuff, but you can actually hit the donate a coffee to this person. Um, I can't figure out where this button is in Gutenberg, so if anybody knows, please show me. A uh, big blue button. Uh, so I work a lot in Moodle and the education space. We use big blue button all the time. I used to do this all the time. So it's like Adobe Connect. It's like a, a web conferencing platform. I can't believe that there's only 5,000 plugins. Uh, Big Blue Button's open source. I love Big Blue Button. I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Uh, but yeah, you, I've actually been to a virtual conference where the person ran it off of WordPress, which is unusual for an education conference, uh, using BuddyPress and Big Blue Button. So if you've got any kind of web conferencing webinar, you want to put up webinars, look into Big Blue Button. And Likewise, this one, if you're in the education space, H5P, again, I can't believe more people aren't using this. If you haven't gone to h5p.org, go there, check it out, because if you're building any kind of educational stuff, H5P has got a whole lot of resources, and you can put them inside your, your WordPress. So you can actually put in quizzes, tests, polls, all kinds of cool stuff like that. So if you're doing any kind of education stuff, definitely take a look at this one. And finally, uh, 
uninstall Hello Dolly, install Hello Samuel L. Jackson. Okay, it hasn't been updated in a while. Not a lot of people are using it, but trust me, this is an awesome plugin. Um, so cool. All right, uh, so. There we go. Um, questions. Oh, wait, how did this slide get in here? Look at that wonderful car, only $500. Uh, questions? Comments, hateful things to say. Plug in suggestions.